Hey, Beth and Chris. Um, Chris here from Holmes and 719. Earlier today, Beth, you and I talked about doing some stuff uh, with your uh, townhome and possibly exchanging that into another townhome. And uh, so I did a little video here for you guys to take a look at uh, the market conditions and some numbers. And I'll, I'm going to send you some of the attachments so you'll have those um, for your own record. So you'll be able to look at those and, and dig in deep if you so choose to. Um, but let's get started here. I'm going to share my screen in the background, and then we will get this, uh, show you what I'm looking at here. So the first thing we're going to look at um, is some MLS data from that area. And we're just looking at uh, roughly back, I think, 180 days-ish to try to see what's been going on in the vicinity of your townhome so that we can... Uh, get a better feel for what's going on in the market. You can see a lot of the, the units here that were for sale did close. There was an expire. There is a couple actives. This is 76 Vale that we spoke about. Um, and then 121 Vale is also out there. Um, you can see the distance uh, relative to yours. I mean, most of these are really close. Some of these ones that are out three miles maybe aren't really comps for yours, but they're in the data set. So uh, we wanted to have uh, a little bit more data to look at than just a couple for this kind of analysis so we get a better a better picture, even if it's a little fuzzy at the edges. It's, you know, at least you see, um, get a better understanding of what, what's out there. So this particular spreadsheet is sorted based on square footage or finished square foot. And you can see the smallest one here is uh, 798 all the way up to 1483. Yours is at the 1122 mark, so somewhere up in here. Uh, what I found to be interesting with that um, was that it didn't seem to matter. Um, you know, these other ones that are out in Deer, Deer Creek that are three miles out, they, have, they sell for a different price. But the ones that are in, in your neighborhood and townhomes, it doesn't seem like it really matters um, you know what the price point is. We got one right here at 395. We got ones on here at 395. <laughs> so uh, we got the one here at 320. That's from 2021. That's when it sold. Um, condition wise, it looked like he was okay. So I don't know why that one sold for so cheap. Um, a couple of years back, I would have thought it would have sold for more. But um, it seems like there's a lot 395, 395, 395. Um, you know, it's, it's, in the, especially the 2023, if I sort them by 2023 of the year, um, you'll see 395, 340, but that's the one over in Deer Creek. 395, 395, again, Deer Creek, 395, 365, and the fall of last year. And they did have, um, you know, a pretty good price def deficit from last year till now. The market's starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, but even that, the days on market, I'll show you here in a minute, um, tends to be pretty high. If I go to a, a different report that I have, uh, this is a little hard to understand. <laughs> so don't don't try to dig into it a lot. But roughly, you can see here, um, 40 days on market is kind of um, that Willow Creek areas, uh, what it takes to sell about 67% odds of selling yours. They've got two that didn't sell, two that are active, and eight that did close. And we can see here, like the days on market that we had and where they kind of fell, uh, the median days on market being 40. Some of them were on way longer. Some of them were on a little bit shorter. And when they get cheap, they go quicker. Imagine that. So, um, you know, over here, we have the median price point and we have some of the, the properties that at the 400 and some of the cheaper ones, this one down at 220 is really kind of affecting this um, slope intercept line so don't put a lot of weight in that if i that's a deer creek uh, property so if i take that one out this will pull up quite a bit higher but uh you know it's i think it's safe to say that 385 395 range is a safe bet and we're seeing here the median price of 395 we don't have any data over that so uh, there's nothing there to say it's going to sell for more than that uh next i was going to show you some altos data that we have to look at market conditions. I did try to look at Palmer Lake with this data, but there's just not enough activity in there to give it anything to work with. It actually comes up and says, nope, not getting me nothing. So uh, when I look at Monument, uh, market action index is 70. It just means it's a little warm, a little cold. 
Um, definitely a buyer seller market where people get to negotiate. No one's being forced into anything. The closer it gets to 30, people get forced to do things. The whole closer it gets to 100, people get forced to do things. So, uh, but yeah, you can see here, uh, this data set is not very big either. One. <laughs> so, so it's jumping all over the place here when we look at the data set. Um, and I'm only showing this to you because it's, it's when there isn't a lot of data, it's harder to make clear uh, analysis or clear decisions uh, as to what to be doing. But, oh, I did say, I didn't mention it here. We are looking at just condos. So, uh, you know, you can see the median price point of condos back in 2018 is 377 and now it's 400. So it's not really shifting. Um, I've done a similar analysis for a few condos recently. And that's been a consistent trend. Um, you know, in the last couple of years, we've seen huge growth on single family homes, but I have not seen that in most condos. So condos, townhomes, it just doesn't, they don't seem to appreciate at quite the same rate or anywhere close to a, a single family house. Um, the next thing I think I was going to show you, uh, was what does this mean for you? Right. So if, if you sell your house, um, your property over there at 395, what, uh, does it mean to you guys? So I did a couple, um, I use a tool from heritage style company. that does a little bit of analysis, creates an estimated seller's net sheet. So in this case, I actually put the sales price at 385. Kind of doing almost not a worst case scenario, but a lowercase scenario, so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars sales price. Selling it in June, you got a thirty-eight thousand uh, dollar note. You said to pay off. You got some taxes there, um, which may or may not be paid. So this is an estimate. It changes. I promise you, closing sheet will not match this, but it's an estimate because it all depends on who negotiates what. Title insurance policy, owner's extended coverage, uh, bundled fees, final water billing, so that's just the default 500, tax cert, um, you know, what all these fees, and then you've got the commissions for sales, because uh, you're really like me and all the things I've done, so you really want to make sure I get paid, and, uh, you know, what does that mean to you? The sales price minus all this stuff equals a, a net to you at closing of 318394 you then take that forward to buying the other one and we look at that and you bring 318 to close you can expect to have a um a thousand dollar monthly payment uh, on that new mortgage presuming a lot of things a 6.1 percent interest rate on an investment property which you may or not be able to get but you're putting a lot of money down so maybe you can't you have to find that out but you buy the other one at 400,000, you put this much down you got a loan for that at this interest rate. Um, we've got some, you know, taxes and stuff like that, that it's got to be paid taxes, insurance, depending on how it's negotiated with the price. And you can, uh, you know, you get this breakdown roughly of a thousand dollars per month. So um, the next question you're probably going to have for me is uh, what is it going to rent for? What's the new one going to rent for? And uh, new one, current one, either one doesn't seem to matter. They're both three bedrooms. Uh, the other one's a little bit bigger, but, most people, when they buy rentals or get rentals, they look at bedroom counts because they've got, you know, them and two rugrats and they need to put them in a space. So like, how many bedrooms can I get? And the fact that one is bigger than the other is more of a perk, uh, not necessarily a huge cash flow advantage for the investor. And uh, I looked at the MLS. I looked at a tool called Rental Beast that we have. I looked at uh, Rentometer, which is another website that does an analysis. Rentometer um, came up with a ridiculous number, like $2,500 a month you could rent it for. And I don't think that's anywhere near close. And when I looked at the data it was looking at, to me, it was way too big. It was like 10 miles. And I was trying to force it down to get it into a smaller bucket. And it would not let me do that. Um, so when you look at 10 miles, that's all of Colorado Springs, effectively. And, um, you know, you're not competing when you're, have a town home up there. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be with all of Colorado Springs. So um, I looked at, like I said, rental beast. I looked at the MLS. I looked at Zillow <clears throat> trying to find, you know, what do I think it'll rent for? Um, and I think either one of them, 2,100 is probably the max you'll get. And if you put it out there for 2,200 and you don't get a lot of applicants and you don't get good applicants, drop the price quickly. 
until you get what you want. And, uh, you know, then you'll know for sure exactly <clears throat> what you can rent it for. So, um, yeah. And then the other thing I was going to show you was the 1031 company I mentioned on the phone, IPX 1031. Uh, I have a guy up there named Tracy, uh, Tracy Wilson. Um, his number is 303-883-5846, He's um, been pretty well connected in the investment world. He would be the guy in this IPX website. That's the company he works for that would uh, be a potential custodian for you to facilitate the transfer of the money. Um, then there's a whole lot of other mechanics we can talk into if this remotely sounds interesting to you. Um, to try to do that, then we can look at, um, you know, how do we structure that so that you can get the other one and sell yours. There's some language we put in contracts to try to, uh, you know, get the other party to behave and cooperate with the 1031 and give you some more time to, to, to sell yours, especially considering uh, the market conditions that we were just looking at there, 40 days on market. So, um, Tomorrow, I'll go up and take a look at that. No matter what you say here, I'll probably go look at it because I'll be there anyway. And I already got the showing. And uh, you know, I can take some new photos of that unit so you can see it and uh, share those with you. But if you have any questions, other thoughts, let me know and I'll dig into those. Thanks for the inquiry. And, uh, you know, I learned a few things today too. So uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.